I will now talk about the expected value or expectations. Expectation, expected value or expectation of a random variable of a random variable or v okay for short random variable and the expectation is the average or mean of that random variable okay so the expectation expectation of x of random variable x is its mean okay or average okay. and there are two ways we can write it there are two equivalent ways we can write the, this expectation so i can actually let me first say here that just as a reminder that x random variable is a function from a sample space to the set of reals right and one definition or one way of writing the definition of the expected value of x is to sum over all possible outcomes in the sample space little s and big s and here we look at the probability of this little s times the value that x maps s to. Another way of writing it is not summing over all the outcomes, but summing over all the values, little values that x can take. And here we say p of x times x. Okay, So these two are equivalent. And again, the little x is the value that big x maps an outcome to. S is the outcome itself, right? So let's look at, at a simple example and show that they are actually equivalent, that they will give us the same value. Suppose the experiment is that we toss a coin twice. And here we know that the, uh, the, the sample space is, is H, 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 T, T, H, and T, T. And suppose I define this random variable. So if you look at this, this random variable basically captures the number of heads in these two tosses of the coin. So x of h, h is 2, and so on. And if I ask what is the expected value of x, I can look at the, I, can, I will show it based on the both definitions. So based on the first definition, the expected value of x tells me it's the sum over all, sam, or over all outcomes in the sample space of the probability of that outcome times the value of that outcome under x. So this will be the probability of h h times x of h h plus the probability of h t times x of h t plus the probability of t h times x of t h plus the probability of t t times x of t t. Okay. So all these probabilities here, this is one fourth. This is one fourth. This is one fourth, and this is one fourth here. X of H H, of course, is two. X of H T is one. X of T H is one. X of T T is zero. So we have one fourth times two, plus one fourth times one, one fourth times one, plus one fourth times zero, and gives us one. Okay, if you evaluate it. The other way to look at it is that if I now look at the summation based on the second definition the summation over the values that x can take now this little x can be either zero or one or two so we have p of zero times zero plus p of one times one plus p of two times two well p of zero times zero i don't need to know what p of zero is i'm multiplying by zero this is zero p of one what's the probability that x will take the value one well, it is the probability of either having the outcome uh, HT or the outcome TH. So this is, we have two outcomes of the four give us one. So we have one half times one. What's the probability of two? It's the probability of HH, which is one fourth times two, and this is half, right? So that sum of the, of the one half times one plus one fourth times two is one. You see, as you see, both of them give you exactly the same value. Okay, so this is the definition of, of expected value, 
and uh, you, you can use either of them. Sometimes one of them is more convenient than the other, but in, in both cases, you should always get the same value. If you are not getting the same value based, based on these two definitions, you are applying them one of, at least one of them incorrectly. Okay. One, one very powerful and important result about expectation is what we call the linearity of expectations. Linearity of expectations. So what does this tell us? It tells us that it tells us that if you have n random variables, if you have n random variables, if x1, x2, xn are random variables, regardless random variables on the same sample space, okay, on the same sample space, then the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus xn is the sum of the expected values of these random variables. Okay. So the expected value of the sum of variables is the sum of expected values of the, of the individual variables. One of the powers of this, uh, of this uh, theorem comes from the fact that I'm not saying anything about the independence or dependence of these random variables. If you have n random variables and you look at their sum, this theorem applies regardless of this, whether these random variables are dependent or not. Now, this is one version of it. We are talking about the sum of these n random variables. We can easily show it for two when n equal two. So if I wanna look at the proof, for n equal to, so we are saying that the expected value of x1 plus x2 is the expected value of x1 plus expected value of x2. We wanna show this, okay? We wanna show this, right? So what is the expected value of x1 plus x2? Well, the expected value of x1 plus x2, if I go based on, for example, the first definition, it is the sum over all elements in, in the outcomes in the sample space of P of S times X1 of S plus X2 of S, right? And this basically is the, the, the sum of P of S times X1 of S plus P of S times X2 of s. This is over s here. And now I can, this is the sum over all these here, right? So now I can say this is the sum over s of p of s, x1 of s, plus, so I can break it really into two summations here, the p of s, x2 of s. And if you look at this, at these terms, based on the definition, this is e of x1, and this is e of x2, okay? If you want to show it for more than two, for n greater than two, you can use induction here, okay? So based on induction, we have already shown it for the base case. If you use mathematical induction, you can assume it is true for n, show it for n plus one, and this will be a nice exercise for you to do. Another, uh, another uh, part of this linearity of expectation is that if you have, if you have two random variables, so suppose x and y are two random variables, and A and B and C are, are uh, constant, okay, or some constants, then the expected value of AX plus BY plus C, so basically I'm taking a linear combination of X and Y, is, B, is the A times the expected value of X plus B times the expected value of Y plus C. So the expected value of a linear combination of random variables is a linear combination of the expected value of the, of the variables, okay? And the proof for this, if I wanna do the proof here, is that if I look at the expected value of AX plus BY plus C, 
I have, now I can sum over, I'm using the second definition now, for example, here. So we know that we are going to sum over every little x that big x takes, over every little y that big y takes. And this will be the, the value that x and y take. Uh, that 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 ax plus by plus c this whole thing is now a random variable okay this whole thing you can actually we can name this as z this whole thing is a big random variable called we call z okay and the expected value of z is that it is the expected value where what are the possible values that z can take it's a little x plus b little y plus c times the probability, the joint probability now, of this x, y here. What is the probability that x, y take these two values, x and y, okay? So this is, now I can start just manipulating this really here, and this is the sum over little x of ax, and the sum over little y of p, of x y of little x y plus the sum of little over little y of b y I'm just really manipulating these terms here and the sum over little x of p x y of x y plus the C term there, which is the C is outside and uh, the inside that it has nothing to do with, with C itself. So this will be X, Y and, and this term here. And if you simplify this, what you will get is that it is A, the sum over all X, X, P of X and plus B, the sum over all y, y, p of y, plus c. And this basically gives us the definition of a. If we look at this, this is by definition, this is a times e of x, plus b times e of y, plus c. Okay, so this is the proof we can get for, uh, for this uh, theorem here. Now, what I did here, and what we did even in the linear in, in the first uh, part of the linearity of expectation is that we're really looking at the expectation of a function of random variables. Because when I look at x1 and x2, I am basically summing. We have a function of these two random variables. And here, ax plus by plus c, it's really a function of x and y. So if x and y are random variables, then ax plus by plus c is a random variable. So more generally is that in more generally is that if you have if you have like let's say random variable y it's really a function f of a random variable x then the expected value of this y is you can still sum over all the little x's here but you have to apply f to this little x and still it is the probability of little x here okay what do i mean by this is that Suppose x, let's say, x can take values, uh, you know, let's say x, let's actually put it here, x can be 0, 1, or 2, this is an example, okay? x can be 0 with probability 1 fourth, 1 with probability 1 half, and 2 with probability 1 fourth here, okay? And suppose I am interested, and we, we have calculated the, the expected value of x here before. This is, this is 1. But suppose now I'm saying that y is x squared. How do I compute the prob what What is the formula for of, of y? As I just wrote there, this is the expected value of x squared, which is the sum still over all x, but it is x squared times p of x. Okay? So here now you can say it is x squared is 0 squared times p of 0 plus 1 squared times p of 1 plus 2 squared times p of 2. In this case, it will be this is all 0 here. 1 squared times p of 1, it is 1 half. 2 squared, it's 4 times p of 2, 1 fourth. This becomes 1. 
So this is now 1.5, okay? So the expected value of x squared is 1.5, okay? So this is how you would apply, how you would compute the expected value of a function of these, of these random variables. You can apply the function to x and still use the p of x there, okay? Now, let's actually show a very, how, how powerful the linearity of expectation can be in, in making our life much easier when we are computing the expected value of some, of some uh, experiment we are looking at. So let's look at the following. I uh, suppose I toss a coin n times and I'm saying, what is, the pro what is the expected value of the number of heads, okay? Or similarly, we can look at the, we can look at the n bit, we can look at the n bit uh, binary vectors, where the probability of every vector is one over two to the n. Okay, so we have n vectors, binary vectors of length n from from one to, to n, and each each position here can be either zero or one. And the probability of zero or one in each one of them is is one is one half, for example. So here we what we talk we we talk about is really we have n independent Bernoulli trials. Okay, in the first place we have a Bernoulli trial with uh, with the probability of success 0.5, the probability of failure 0.5, and so on. And I uh, I say for example, and you know if we want to make our life or if we make it more interesting. Let's actually not talk about 0.5 and 0.5 for head and for for zero and one, but I can talk about the probability of zero being, or the probability of one being p, and the probability of zero one minus p. Okay, so if p is 0.5, of course one minus p is 0.5. But suppose I'm going to talk about a general case where we have the probability of of um, of one being p and probability of zero one minus p, then of course this is no longer p of v being one over two to the n is no longer the right probability distribution. This is only for when we have 0.5 for each when p equals 0.5. So suppose I have p of one equals p, the probability of one is p, the probability of zero one minus p, and I say what's the, x is the number of ones, okay, in the vector. So if you look at x, x basically takes values in. We have zero ones or one one or two ones all the way to n one. Okay? So now I'm interested in I am interested in the probability or the expected value of x. Okay? So the expected value of x here, again, we can look at it as sum over all x, x times p of x. Okay? And x again can be in zero all the way to n, to to n. So in this case here, what would be this this uh, summation? It will be the summation of x, x. What is the probability of p of x? Okay, so x, x is the number of ones here, right? So the number of ones it is really about the n. Choose x. This is the number of ways we can choose the x ones out of this n times the probability that we have this this x ones here so we will have the p to the x and then the probability that the remaining n minus x elements are are uh, zeros right so this will be this sum now we say what is this sum here okay so if you look at it of course this uh, the, the n choose x times p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x we have seen this this is called the, the we have the binomial theorem for this but how do i evaluate this okay, okay remember that x here is that n 0 1 2 all the way to n so if really i wanted to write it here this is from x equals 0 to n x n choose x p of to the x 1 minus p to the n minus x notice that n x equals 0 doesn't really add anything here because we are going to be multiplying 0 by something so this is equal to this is equal to x equal 1 x n choose x p to the x 1 minus p n 
to the n minus x, this. Now, if we look at this here, I can actually, if I want to simplify this sum, this is equivalent to x equal 1 to n here. The x times n to the a, n choose x is the same as n times n minus 1 choose x minus 1. And this is p to the x, 1 minus p, n minus. I made, a, I, made a, I made use of a very important result that k times n choose k is the same as n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. Okay, I made use of this result. So when we have this here, now I can take n and one n and one of the p's outside the summation. So I can say that this is equal n times p times x equal 1 to n. The n is outside now, and we have n minus 1 choose x minus 1. We took one of the p's outside, so we have now p to the x minus 1, and 1 minus p to the n minus x. Okay, so if I look at it like this, I can now just manipulate the indices. So this is n, p. Notice that the indices are from 1 to n. I can actually change them so that they are from, and I will choose now a different a different um, a symbol here. So I can say from zero to n minus one. I can choose from zero to n minus one, and this becomes n minus one y and p to the y and one minus p to the n minus one minus y. Okay, so I replace the x minus 1 by y. This is why now y goes from 0 to n minus 1. And if you look at this, I can now use the binomial theorem on this summation here in the, in the middle. So if you look at this, this is n p. And what is this summation from 0 to n minus 1 of n minus 1? Choose y, p to the y, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus y. By the binomial theorem, this is p plus 1 minus p to the n minus 1, okay? This is by the binomial theorem. Remember, it's x plus y to the n. We give that, uh, we get that result. And if you look at this, what we wrote here, this is really 1. So it is n p, <coughs> okay? So the expected value of this is n times p, and it should make sense because if I ask you to toss a coin n times, and this, this coin has probability 0.5 of being head, what do you think, how many, how many heads you will see, the expected number? You will see half of the, of the tosses to give you a head, which is the n times 1 half. And if p equals 0, then you toss the coin n times, you're going to get tail all the times. It is n times 0 and so on. But if you look at this, you know, we, uh, we did this calculation of, of uh, this uh, work here. It was, it was not a simple thing to get to this expected value n times, n times p, okay? Is there a different way to derive it and much simpler? The answer is yes, and we can make use of the linearity of expectation. So how do I do this? Remember that x is the number of ones, okay? And we have now this binary vector all the way from 1, 2, all the way to n. So now I can define n random variables, x1, x2, and xn. And I can say xi is 0 if, suppose this, this binary vector is v, if v0, sorry, vi is 0, and 1 if vi is 1. So xi is an indicator function. It tells me if there is a 1 there or not. So xi is 0 to tell me that there is no 1 in position i. xi is 1 to tell me that there is 1 there. Now, if you look at x, x is the number of 1s. But xi will take value 1 if there is 1 in position 1. And x2 will take value 1 if there is 1 in position 2. x is really the sum of these n variables. Once I look at it like this, now the expected value of x is the expected value of, of these, the sum of the xn. By linearity of expectation, it is the sum from 1 to n of the expected value of xi. 
Now, what is the expected value of xi? This variable can take zero with probability one minus p, or one with probability p. So this is really p. And it is the same for all xi's, right? Because any xi you take, the probability of zero is one minus p, the probability of one is p. So by the linearity of expectation, this, the probability, the expected value of x is the sum from i equal one to n of the expected value of xi, which is the sum from one to n of p, which is n times p, which is exactly the value we got before, but with long, tedious derivation of this formula specifically, okay? So this is how powerful this linearity of expectation is. It allowed me to derive this value in a very simple way. And it's very important to keep in mind here that we derived really expected value for a general case where you have what we call a binomial distribution. You have n experiments, independent experiments, where each one of these experiments has has two outcomes. For example, in our case here, it was zero and one. There was probability p for one, probability one minus p for zero. The expected value of such a random variable would be n times p. If the random variable corresponds to the number of ones, it will be n times p. So we could calculate it, you know, using the tedious way of just derive, using the exact, the definition of e of x and simplifying that until we get to n times p. Or I could have used the linearity of expectation, define n indicator functions or random variables, these x, xi's. Then I look at the expected value of each one of the xi's. It is p. Then I have the summation of n p's. It's n times p. Okay. So this is how powerful this, this theorem can, can be. And we use it in many other applications as well.